In this series of videos, I will show you how I build Indie Mower, a project that tries to replace this with that. The end goal is to build a fully automatic lawn mowing solution so I don't have to do it ever again on my own. I will share with you all the steps including making parts for the prototypes, 3D printing, electronics and all the tests. But today I will build a remote controlled lawn mower to test all the parts and validate the idea. I literally cannot wait to see all these comments. I can't believe this dude is so lazy that he can't even mow the grass on his own. It's not about me being lazy, because building such a robot is a lot of work. The problem I have with this kind of lawnmowers is that they are loud, but most importantly, I have to be actively involved to mow the lawn for a few hours every single week or every other week. It's a lot of work that can be easily automated. And that's why this project was born. You will never build it better than what you can buy in the store. It will be 1000 times better to just simply buy it in the store. Of course, if you don't want to bother with building a robot lawnmower on your own, just go to the store and buy something. But the most important thing in the Indie Mower project is that it will be easy to build on your own, it will be an open source project, so you also will be able to fix it on your own for very, very low price. The commercial lawnmowers that you can buy, automatic lawnmowers that you can buy right now, are expensive and very, very expensive to fix when something breaks or sometimes even impossible so that you have to buy a new unit. In this case, the project will be open source, you will be able to modify, adjust and improve whatever you want and of course fix it all on your own. So that was just a quick reply to the comments that definitely will be there under this video. But now let's talk about how a robot lawnmower actually work. Let's start with grass, house and a garden. Around your garden you need what's called a perimeter wire. It is labeled here with blue and thanks to that the lawnmower can go around your garden but not outside of it. It works a little bit like the DVD logo. At this stage the robot is basically an obstacle avoiding robot with a knife that can cut your grass and once the battery is low it needs to go to the charging station that is right here. So it switches to a line following mode and it follows the perimeter wire until it reaches the charging station. You can put the perimeter wire deep in the ground if you want the robot to pass over some terrains and for example protect the garden right here and you don't need the perimeter wire for for example the trees or other obstacles because the robot has sensors for that and can just simply bounce from the obstacles. As you can see robot lawnmowers are seriously not that complicated so let's build one. I did some spying two days ago and I took some pictures in the store of the robotic lawnmower that looks like this. I honestly wanted to really over engineer my project and this mower a lot. Fortunately I took a look at this one and now I have a much simpler idea on how to build this. The most important step right now is to design a very durable and well-built cutting mechanism because this thing will basically run all the time as long as the robot is running so it has to be very very durable. So everything as always started with a Fusion 360 design. It was very rough, it wasn't polished, it wasn't perfect and later you will see me using a drill a lot. It was printed on FL Sun V400 but later for the other parts I switched to my brand new Bumble Up X1 Carbon. As I mentioned there was a lot of drilling, a lot of notes written on the parts on what to improve in the next versions and that was actually pretty useful so a simple sharpie and you know a few words on each part can help you a lot in designing the next version and the next iteration of your project, totally recommend doing that. Here in the middle of the night I'm testing the motor and the disc for the blight and yes I'm wearing safety glasses because I was worried that something will go wrong and at high RPMs this 3D printed part might explode. The motor had no enough torque to actually start spinning, I thought that at that moment. Later it turned out that it was just a bad setup of my remote controller, so I fixed that later and it worked fine in the morning. I was very happy to see that working and because in this project I tried to implement the philosophy of done is better than perfect, a lot of things were just made on the fly and with like hand tools rather than CNC machines. 
Here I have been talking to the camera, but the microphone was off, so I was just explaining that I'm gonna use plywood and cut it with a jigsaw and that this place in the background is my new workshop shed that I built with my dad from scratch. We are still working on it, but it's very close to being finished and I'm super excited to finally have a nice place to work. I've copied all the dimensions from my technical drawings that I've made in Fusion 360 and then started cutting the plywood with a jigsaw. And sure, it's not gonna be super precise, but it's good enough for a prototype and it took me like 10 or 15 minutes to make that. Then a little bit of sanding and drilling some additional holes, especially for the disc and the motor. I forgot one for the wheel in the front, so I will do that later. But plywood is super easy to work with, it's also very inexpensive. And for this kind of robotics project, let me remind you, a prototype is a perfect choice. I feel like for the last few months I have been really focused on making everything perfect and as precise as it can be. But honestly, most of the stuff don't have to be and that's why in this project I try to just go forward as fast as I can and drill holes on the fly, do not think too much about the design in the cut, because it will all change, it's just a prototype that will be improved multiple times, hopefully to finally end up with being like a very very nice and polished product, but it does not have to be in the beginning. It's just a prototype, so the quicker I made it, the better it is, both for me and for you as my audience. Making this kind of projects and especially making them quick requires you to learn and discover new topics very often. And with that, Skillshare, the sponsor of this video, can definitely help. When you do what I do, learning is essential part of your work. I'm learning something new from a broad spectrum of fields every single day and I enjoy it a lot. Something that I'm trying to improve now is product design sketching, which is very useful when I'm starting to work on a new project and thanks to Skillshare, it has been way easier. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry experts. You can find here classes focused on design, electronics, Arduinos, and even Fusion 360, or even the ones I enjoy a lot recently on drawing and productivity. If you would like to start building robots like this one, you can find a perfect class by Mark Fraunfelder that teaches you all the basics of Arduino boards, from installing all the software to controlling different devices. With this class, you can go very quickly from nothing to programming your first microcontrollers. If you prefer mechanical design, there are great classes by Kevin Kennedy on Fusion 360 that will teach you all the basics as well as more advanced topics. And now, first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive one month free trial of Skill share so go check out my link in the description to learn more here it is ready for the first test this test will be focused only on the driving capabilities the esc is already connected the disc is mounted but the blades are not so i will just see if it can drive around the grass if i can control it remotely through the smartphone because that should also already work because the arduino is there there is no any kind of autonomy i don't have the boundary wire in the grass so i will focus on that later firstly driving if that works cutting the grass and in the next videos, the autonomy. Unfortunately and unexpectedly, the motors did not have enough torque to run the robot, so I decided to try on a different surface and it worked okay, but there were a lot of problems, the front wheel had the strips that were completely unnecessary, the battery was in the front and generally a lot of things to improve, but it was a good start. So then I decided to stick the blades anyway to the disc, yes, six of them, and try if it will cut any grass and thankfully it really did. As mentioned, these motors are quite powerful, so I was surprised to see that they can't really handle this robot. It turned out to be the motor driver. It was really terrible and really weak, so this is its place. I took another driver from an old project of mine that I really liked, but unfortunately a new one has to be built. And after implementing that, there was improvement, but it still wasn't perfect and I had to kick the robot every single time when I wanted to start driving it. It doesn't work. and. Like, maybe the motors are not that powerful, but I feel like they are, so maybe it's the motor driver, maybe it's the cables, maybe it's the wheel, it's just 
all the things. I'm about to spend $200 basically on four motors, some electronics, the driver and stuff like this. And it's all just to get this this one mower to work. It was supposed to be an easy project at least at this stage when it's RC controlled, but it's not easy. $200 is a lot of money, so if you'd like to support what I'm doing here on my YouTube channel, you can do it on Patreon, you can do it here on YouTube through just liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and you can also check out my online store. Thank you very much. It has the buttons there, so that without writing any code, you can just test your motors. This is a pretty cool feature. Here I will save you some time and we'll skip all the rebuilding and jump straight into testing. So it definitely needs a bit more power than turning. But when going straight it's pretty nice and I can see some grass flying around, so it's definitely tapping. Nie, bo to do takiej dużej trawy nie jest no. przeznaczone, to musimy z małą niską trawę. No to jest ścina, 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 to jest ścina. I'm working already on the second version of this robot even though the first video is not ready yet but it is when you are watching it uh, and I started with redesigning the wheels I'm not sure why but I feel like the wheels are a very important part of this project and just making them look cool will increase the coolness of the whole robot what else? I finally have a proper motor mount because the first one was a disaster and this thing is already printing so the noises in the background is actually the printer printing the parts I wanted them to be black they are green for some reason, but whatever. They will work finally. Here we go with fail fast, fail forward approach. The second iteration is already ready, even though I'm working on this project only for three days. The plywood has been painted with an ugly and shiny gray color, but it's better than raw plywood. The electronic has been reorganized and now it is in the front. The wheels are a bit smaller and the front wheel is bigger. I also have the covers for the motors and the wheels for the blades is also a bit smaller. I'm still using the LiPo battery, but it will be replaced with a gel battery, the bigger one that I used previously. And I hope all of these improvements will improve how it drives on the grass, so let's check that. If you are not familiar with this kind of robots, they are meant to cut very, very small grass. Like just a tiny piece on the top of the grass every single day, every other day. So this kind of grass is definitely not meant to be cut with this kind of robot. But I decided to try anyway just to see if this is powerful enough. And as you can see it struggled a bit, but I was able to cut some grass which took way too much time, but it worked. To test how it works in the long run, I have been cutting this area every other day for the last two weeks only with the robot. And the results are very promising because the grass was perfect height all the time and the robot had no problems at all to cut the grass. be 
made the very last test of this robot on this square that I have been cutting for the last few days before I release this video and I hope the difference is quite obviously visible so here goes the line here I have been cutting the grass and here not it is much taller and back here I already cut all the grass with the normal lawnmower so this is my testing square for this video so let's cut the grass for the last time In the next part we'll focus on making this robot autonomous and adding the perimeter wire into my garden. If you are interested in the project check out industry.cc slash indiemower and thanks a lot to Skillshare for sponsoring. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next one, bye.